it comes out. You know what was crazy? I've never paid for a drink in my entire life. And you want to know why that is? Because I never drink. Mm -hmm. So when I go and do drink, everyone's like, come on, just drink, bro. Just drink, bro. Let me buy you some. Mm -hmm. So I've ne I swear to God, I've never paid for a drink once in my entire life. <laughs> Airport buys breakfast. Buys breakfast. Day one, day one. All right, so let's let's start this off, baby. We got Lavelle Adams Gray in the building. Yes, yes, AKA yes. AKA Drew Tahada. Drew. Yes, yes, yes. On Power Book 2 Ghost. Yes, yes. What's up, feeling, bro? bro? Yo, listen, let me tell you something. It's such an honor to be here. Yes. Like, like, you guys are doing such an amazing thing, and it's a huge thing, and it's to, to get it together and just be a part of it in any kind of way is just so... Fire. It's fire. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, bro. Dude, it's great to just... Because obviously we don't see each other as much if we don't have scenes together or whatnot. So it's amazing to just get everyone, you know, together and, and really, like, have an hour-long conversation and get mm -hmm. into their head and how they... Because we don't all sit around when we're hanging out at, at the bar and go... So how did you get power? Yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? like, it's, it's like, like yeah. Time for that when we have to, we just chilling. But yeah. here, like, we get to really be like, all right, bet you start here, you start here. Like, we really right. get in tune, like, get in depth with, with yeah, how you with, came up with the stories yeah, and stuff like that. So, so you're from Canada, yes, indeed. And you grew up where in Toronto? Yeah, I, I can't mean, wait to go the back. Six, baby. If anybody like back. does a little deep dive into my life, like I've been in Toronto for the majority of my life, right? And then I moved to Brampton. So you know what Brampton is? Oh, you're like, oh, he's a Brampton man. I'm like, I be hearing Brampton, about man. Brampton all the time. <laughs> Wait, you, yeah, like, you niggas can't to drive out there all type of shit. Yeah, you gotta go out. It's, it's kind of like going to Long Island or something like that. Like yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's a little bit of a drive, you know. Mm. Have you have you you been to Toronto? I've been to Toronto yeah, like a, a minute ago. I was probably like fifteen. It was fun as fuck. I yeah. snuck into a strip club. Really? At yeah. fifteen? Yeah, it was fire. <laughs> I mean, my contender, we have the way like the best food, yo. What? The best food. I don't remember like the food that I had out there, like. I think I, I was really with my cousin, so I was eating like home cooked like shit. So oh, yeah. I never really went to like none of the like restaurants out there that's popular shit like that. Like I never really got a chance to really get out there. And, yeah. Like, I I grew up my whole life playing hockey in Toronto from when I was like yeah. ten to actually like even younger, like eight to like thirteen, fourteen. Mm -hmm. So I I spent so much time in Toronto, like uh, down by the airport airport road where all the hotels are. I feel like that, that's how, that's how we bonded because like right. you were saying like you spent a lot of time in Canada. And I was like oh and I just went to Boston. Right. I just went. To, you're not from Boston, but you're from Rhode Island. Right. Right. And yeah, it's like an so hour. I just went out there to the East Coast, and I was like, "This is gorgeous." You did know? you like, like Boston? I did. I yeah. did. It's not. It's like Boston is a different vibe. Bro. It's a different <laughs> vibe. I liked. We're on like. It's Cambridge. like an unorganized New York City. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's mad weird. Like, yeah. and like, I fuck with it have we we went paddle boating in the water? Oh, and, cool. And it was like, this is a thing like, in the seaport, right? Yeah, yeah. like yeah. you could. I could do this, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. I could just, this, this was my life. It was yeah. kind of like, felt like golfing. Yeah. Mm. Felt like taking it's like a nice little hobby. Like you just yeah. clear your mind. And just yeah. yeah. Road you book. know what I mean? Yeah. So you started acting in Canada first. Indeed. Yes. And then, and then, did you ever move to uh, to the U.S. before Power or? So like the Canadian journey is a little like is a little nuanced, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of I guess it's kind of similar to the British journey, but like. You got to, like, get your visa first right. and then do that whole thing. Get representation out here first and then do the whole pilot season thing in L.A. Mm -hmm. So Kiana and I um, did the whole trip to um, to L.A. Who's your awesome fiancé? Yes, indeed. Yeah, 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 I didn't yeah, know if you guys yeah, remember. Yeah. I love Kiana. She's the best. She is the best. She's my she favorite. Is the best. And she holds it down. Like, yeah. you want... No, you, Nobody better to have a like be a right. partner and like go out to LA and like do the thing. Right. And you guys are on the same journey. Like yeah. she books everything. She's in every movie. I'm like watching something. I'm like, I'm like, oh, here's Kiana. Yeah. <laughs> nah, she really is Look, killing shit. She's I say it, you, if you, you if you're on set with me, you hear it all the time. Like she hoops. Right. Mm. She hoops. Drops mm. forty every game. Mm. Like you know, you know what I mean. Triple double. Yeah, like Triple you know, double. and it's it's a, it's just like steel sharp and steel, right? So like yeah. you're you're be, you're able to like this is the person that's doing your self tapes with you. Right. That's what that's I was going to so ask. Fire, you guys bro. Your together? That's yeah. so fire, yeah. She bro. did that's, my tape for this. Yeah. Man, that's so fire. Like, and for a person like me that hates self tapes, like, like something like that, that would give me like to actually be like, all right, fine, I fuck with self tapes now. Like, because they make it fun. Yeah, you make you it know? fun. Like, and you you could just experiment a little more. Like, you're just comfortable with the person you're reading with. Like, you feel me? Like. Mm. I fucking hate self tapes. That, well, I hate them. You hate self tapes? I don't hate them. I just I, I'm like I feel like I'm so ass. Like when I when, <laughs> like when I watch my self tapes, I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Like 
it's also because we're doing it like he's doing it with like Eli. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, you know, who's like trapping and then going up. Like, yeah. okay. okay. I'm kidding. Okay. But um, yeah, it, 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 it is. It's not the same. I like going in the room better. Mm -hmm. Just because walking I, I, in, right? And then you just get that like that feeling like, oh, I'm here. Like I have to do this shit now. Right? There's no like, cause nigga, like I ain't gonna lie. It's been some self tapes. I'm like, I did like a tape. I'm like, bro, I don't even want to do this shit. And I literally would not do the self tape, bro. Right. Really? Like, yeah, I swear to God, bro. Like, cause I, it just don't feel right to me. Like sometimes, and like if it don't feel right to me, I know it's not gonna look right. And I'm not about to just give these people a whack ass self tape. So I, honestly, I'm just not gonna give you a self tape yeah. at all. But I, I, I feel like as actors, we're not the best judge of our own work. Yeah, I'm a. I agree I, honestly, with that. honestly, I'm a terrible judge of my own work. Like I'm, I feel like I am a little too hard on myself. But like, I don't know, bro. I make myself cringe when I watch myself. Like I hate watching myself. I feel bro. that sometimes. I, I'm like, I'd be like, why the fuck did I like say that? Sometimes, like, yeah. Like, why did I, why did my eyebrows like, do why, that? Why, why, yeah. Look at that angle. Like yeah. look at my face. Like yeah. what am I doing? It's yeah. definitely been a lot less of that lately, though. Like ever since, like ever since. We started Ghost. I really ha like. I've been having to pay attention to myself, right. so I can't really just be like, uh, like I really gotta analyze what the fuck I be doing now. Yeah, so it's different now. You yeah. feel me? But back in the day, though, I used to be like, bro, what the, f like, what is this? Bro? <laughs> I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. I've learned so much being on this show. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Like, Hell yeah. I've gotten so much more comfortable with myself what? as a as a man, just yeah. being like, yeah. this is who I am. This is yes. this is what I bring to the table now. Right. Like, mm -hmm. I gotta be okay with it. Do 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 you guys ever argue about doing a tape? Like, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm annoying because yeah. like right, right. we come I'm like, from fuck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kiana and I come from two different backgrounds, right? Yeah. So she, we both have studied, but I like I went to college. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. I went to college for acting, and I come with that sometimes. Right. Like I'm so like I'm. She's more. She she's because she's a water sign, and I'm like I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> she's a Scorpio, and I'm Aquarius. So I'm more oh, logical man. and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Whatever. But like I go from a very analytical place when it comes to our work, right? So. um and when I get to step back and be behind the camera, right. oh, she's getting all the, she's getting everything because I know what mm. she can do mm. and I trust her. So I give her these notes. I'm like, listen, you gotta like, you know, be more still on this line or like, or be like, you. I know you know this journey. You can be more truthful. Admit what we, you know what I mean. And, yeah. and it's gotta cost you. I'm doing all those notes, and yeah. she's like, Lavelle, I'm over it. Like, <laughs> stop coming to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when she, when we flip it now, she's so petty. That mm. she'll do that too, mm. right? And I gotta fight everything. And you just gotta take it on the chin. Like you just gotta be like, all right, all right. It, because <laughs> you do get in your feelings. Like while you're doing a tape, like you have to get emotional, angry, so yeah. then you take it out on the person who was there, <laughs> and they're like, "Well, you suck in bed." Yeah. Like, oh, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like it's also like we'll be bringing up something from like the other, like the last time we did a tape, right? You know, like last time you were acting like this, or mm. you were too tired, or you were too like lazy to da 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 da. So like now, like what, what's it like when I give you that energy? You're like, well, damn, like mm. can you just be here with me in this moment and right. do this tape with me now? Like yeah. I don't need all that. Yeah. But it's like it's real, you know. It's, and and having someone who actually um, cares about the work and cares about your work and knows what you can do. Is very, very annoying. Right. It's important to have as a partner, but it, you need it to be your best. At, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because yeah. they can see through your bullshit. Right, yeah. right, right. And that's scary. Because mm -hmm. right? so they know scary. exactly what you want. They're like, no, bro, do it like this. And and you just like, I'm trying something. Like I'm trying something. Just trying something. nah. It's not gonna, like it's, and she knows mm -hmm. when I when I do my laugh. Mm -hmm. when she do because when I have to do like a charming character or something mm -hmm. like that, I got to do this thing. She knows. <laughs> it's like, oh, you do that laugh. Right. And I'm like, Sh don't like. Let me do my like. Yeah, no, just let me do no, it. No. <laughs> you do that laugh every time. I'm like, ah! all right, chill, <laughs> just chill, me. like chill. Yeah, because as yeah. actors, we do kind of latch on to things that we're that, we, yeah, that, we used that to. we're good at or we used works, to, or yeah. that we normally naturally do. That's yeah. how you know, in my opinion, that you're doing good work. Yeah. Like weirdly, I was doing a tape maybe like I don't know six months ago before we started this season. A couple months before, it was like a thing I was like maybe could have fit in, and um, my little brother. Uh, was knocking on the door and he he like opened it and in the middle of a take and he opened it and he hears me doing the tape and he just walks right in and but uh, but it was, a, it was a great bro. take but here's the thing he walked right in and and I go what the fuck I'm in the middle of a take and he goes oh I just thought you guys were talking and I'm like I've arrived yeah mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. I've arrived mm -hmm. because it he because he thinks you're just talking he don't right. yeah so that's, yeah, that's when fire. I was like oh. Because obviously when you're acting, you're like, oh, if you add mm -hmm. on to it, they're like, oh, he's acting. Yeah. Yeah. If my little brother puts his, he's looking at it and he's and he's, and he's he's uh, listening to what I'm saying and he just thinks I'm in a conversation with someone, you, you I've arrived. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing it right. So yeah. that was like a real yeah. like realization for me. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, I love those days. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah, no, I was, 
No, I really was in the scene. Right. Like, Thank you for the compliment. Right. <laughs> I know a lot of times now I'm doing tapes with like my friend Juan who's been staying with me. I've been doing tapes with him. Bro, he can't even read the lines. Like, <laughs> never mind just be in the scene with me. Like, he doesn't even look up and he just like, and he'll, he like failed English class for four years. <laughs> so it's it's hard, dude. It's hard to like really. Do you like, do you want? Why he's cooking you right now. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he knows. Like, we, we make jokes about it, but it's like, you just kind of have to do what you can because yeah, sometimes yeah. you can't find another actor to come do a tape with you. Do you want that, though? Do you want someone who is in the scene with you, or do you want someone who uh, can read it more neutral? Listen, all I know is I remember I did an audition uh, in person like three years ago with this casting director who's beautiful, who I will not name. Mm -hmm. We were so in the scene together, I literally like forgot about my life. I was like, I'm running away with this human being. And the, and the work was so good because I was so in it. But then other times, you know, you do a tape, with someone and there's a lot of um, movement that you need to do or you need to pick something up, this and that. So it's kind of nice with someone who's kind of a dud behind the camera because you can do that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. A dud? Yeah, but no, listen, <laughs> listen. One, somebody a dud. you're a dud behind the camera. <laughs> it's okay, you're not an actor. You work in construction, but <laughs> you're dud. <okay? laughs> you're dud. <done. laughs> hey, yo, oh my gosh. Damn. But yeah, I don't know. It's just... Uh, as in, as actors, we we this is something that because uh, I've had people from Rhode, like when I go home to Rhode Island, they will uh, come over to my house and uh, you know hang out because that's what I, that's what I like to do, mm. and I'm like oh yeah we got to go do this tape real quick and I'm changing clothes I got all these papers and they think it's so glamorous this life that I live and I'm like no dude I'm printing shit in my dad's office it doesn't have ink I'm mm -hmm. trying to fucking I hate the lighting mm -hmm. and then I got to send this into the e to the world and I don't even know if they watch it. Mm -hmm. So it's like people think it's and so glamorous. And that's another reason I hate cell tapes too because like you never get feedback, right. bro. Yeah. You never get feedback. Right. Whether they hate it or like it, you never, you would never know, bro. Like, and, and this that's thing what is so sometimes. Off. It's like you just send it into the class. Like, yeah, <laughs> but like, it, and it's so sometimes because it's like you, you can do the most in a tape mm -hmm. and then hear nothing for like a month right. and be like, well, I didn't get that shit. Right. They're, gonna, they're probably shooting it right now. And mm -hmm. then be like, oh, they really love you. You're on hold. Yeah. And, da -da 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 -da. Yeah. and you're like, oh, it's been like so long. And right. I kind of forgot about it. Mm -hmm. And then there's the ones where you book and it's been two days. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you never know the yeah, formula. Right. That's what happened with, with me and Power originally. I got it the, like the next day. I don't think I've ever booked this. No, actually I have. I did, I did. I booked, did I do, was Barbershop or something? I think Barbershop was a sub tape. It was a tape, yeah? Yeah, Barbershop 3 was a sub tape. The thing that gets me angry is that I when you when you do a tape mm. and then like Jake Gyllenhaal gets the role and you're like, why? You think Gyllenhaal did a tape? Like you know you had the offer out to him mm. already. Why would you even? Why make my time? me memorize ten pages on my Monday? Oh, and know? that's one thing I hate too, bro. They right. they want to send us self self tapes. Right. They want us to do like four scenes, bro. It's like, bro, right, what the right. fuck? bro, I had a sixteen-page. Bro, the self last self-tape self -tape that was sent to me was fourteen pages. I said, bro, what? That's and it wasn't fourteen crazy. pages of just like regular conversation, bro. It was fourteen pages of like, like right, bro. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, right. how am I about to memorize right. this? And like, and they wanted me to send this shit in like three days, like in like two days. I'm right. like, no. But yeah. that's what I love about self tapes, mm. because a self tape you can make it your own, and you true, can true, when they true, ask true. you to do like, and then this move you gotta stab somebody, mm. and you gotta right. do this thing, and turn here, and right. leave, and come back in, mm. and do the most, like yeah. not just have a conversation, yeah. Yeah, but do the do absolute most. Right. Well, now I can manipulate it. Now right. I can do a fade in and a fade out because I know that like we're standing in this take, mm. and then we gotta move to sitting. Mm. So then let me sit. And you know, I'll do a little wash over to the next part of the city. You, you know do what I mean? All that? You edit it. I do, do the that? most. I'm like, oh. listen, you want me to do this tape? I'm gonna have fun. Right. I'm mm -hmm. gonna have fun and make mm -hmm. it mine. Yeah. So if I'm like, even if I don't get it, at least like I acted and I had fun. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's kind of something. the way that that I I do approach it now. It's like I get to act. Yeah. I get to have fun. I get to at least you know be creative. But yeah, sometimes when you get two, three in a row and you're like, I gotta bang these out today, it's it takes the joy out of it sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. So for me, the joy comes out. I of like this. This is an acting. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. it's like we don't get into it. I like this. I like this. And you, so you booked Ghost on a on a tape, right? It started off on the tape, right. and then we it, from Canada. You were in Canada. Yeah, yeah. Kiana and I did it in my basement, nice. and and we, I never forget this note because we. I didn't know what I was auditioning for. Mm -hmm. They didn't tell me it, it, it was a it was a you know spin off. It was it was a continuation. Mm -hmm. I had heard that they were gonna do a prequel, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was it. And so I always felt like I 
looked enough like Omari Hardwick that I could play a young ghost. Oh, I can see that. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So I was Hell like, yeah, oh, sure. yeah, like, I'm auditioning for someone named Drew. Mm. It's a code name. Mm. Right. And he likes to draw. So I'm like, maybe this is early... Early Ghost, right. he's not in his drama, right? Mm -hmm. Early Ghost was an artist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's an artist, yeah. and he's, you know, and the scene was like, uh, Diana wanted to play basketball, and I was drawing something. And so it was, this, it was this thing that, like, for me, I'm like, all right, well, who is this man? He wants, he's an artist, first and foremost. Right. And so we did a take, and Keanu was like, yeah, that's great, do it again, and draw the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. And that changes it. Yeah. You know, because I was so enthralled with this thing. I was like, you're you're pulling me out of my moment right now. And then this is something that I could capture right now in this moment and could go away any, at any time. So you're basically working with Kiana, a casting director who gives you a redirection, which is incredible. Again, <sighs> I got Juan, who's on Tinder, <laughs> while I'm trying to do my take. Shout out to Juan. We love you, Juan. <laughs> and one day you're going to get... Uh, a nice job for Gianni, and Ooh. then he'll never talk shit again. Yeah. <laughs> the next self, the next self tape you do with G, you, he might, he's, gonna, he's gonna book it, and, and, and today know? will be the end of it. Today will be the end of it. Of... No, I'm playing, but that is that is like great that you have another actor that's like do it like this. Like, yeah, that's a gift. Right. It's tough. It's like that's lit because then they just give you like suggestions sometimes. Like sometimes like you know like you like you don't really know what to do with certain material, and then like boom, you got you got her, and she would be like, oh yeah, maybe you should should do it like this way, like me, yeah. Eli. I don't know what the fuck. Does Eli do your tapes with you? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying like if I was yeah, to do a right. tape with him, like who does tapes with you? Usually it would be like me or like me and Joe. Like Joe, Joe. Like Joe's okay. a pretty jo good. Yeah, guy. Joe's, Joe's a pretty good guy to do. Right. Joe, Joe Anything is business. like he's like a model. He's mm. in kind of he mm. does he has podcasting too. So yeah. he like kind of so he kind of knows what's up. He's a little right. he's a little seasoned. So okay, it, all right. It's a little yeah. He, he, self tapes with him is a little easier. But like yeah. I, if I'm with Eli, bro, he's, he's gonna be like <laughs> I'm be like bro. I, He's like, I don't know, bro. It was cool. It was yeah. good. He's yeah. like, I'm on mushrooms. I don't know what he's talking about. He's going to fuck with whatever, okay. whatever I do. I could literally have the worst self tape. He's like, bro, that shit was fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro. literally. Have you guys ever done um, an audition, like, in an altered state, like, on shrooms or high or drugs nah. or anything like that? Never. No, I, never. I, I did uh, in person once. Really? I was so nervous. That's it was fine. for, I think it was for two broke girls. Mm. It was on the Warner Brothers lot. It was okay. really early on in my career. And um, I took like three shots before uh -huh. I went in because I was nervous. <laughs> And I never did it again. And then I used to, uh, I, I used to take, so, and then another time I had um, Grey's Anatomy. Mm -hmm. it, they, they called me, uh, my manager called me at 11 a.m. They're like, two o'clock today, you have to be um, at the casting office. Can you do it? And me, I'm like, fuck yeah. Like, I love shit like that. Like, right. let's do it. All right. Ten pages. Uh. So I ripped an Adderall, and I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know if the, the the scene was that well, but uh -huh. I was I, I had the lines, right? Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, <laughs> I did okay, but I pride myself on being able to work. Like, there was a scene... Um, uh, last week that we were doing on power and we um we ran out of time like the the sun literally was coming down M me and my scene partner i almost said who it was yeah, yeah. but me and my scene partner um we uh we did it in literally two takes and then wow. that was it we're like we're done Stop we got both of our coverage at the same time I'll, uh, when it comes out i'll say what scene we're talking okay, about okay, okay, okay. yeah i'm never yeah I mean, I've been on set like high like a few times, but never like audition off like no mushrooms or shit like that. Yeah. I'll, I'll be panicking, bro. I don't yeah. think I could do that shit, bro. Like, I've only ever done that one time. Where? I, I, so, we're Jamaican. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bodman. I took yeah, a shot we are. We're, 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 we're all Jamaican here. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I did a shot of Ray and Nephew. Bomb one time. Wait, what's right that? Now. Ray and Nephew Yo. was 63%, 90% yes. overproof. Like, yes. it's destructive. It's the strongest. Bro. Liquor ever like on my life, there's nothing stronger than because than there Ray are Nephew. like absinthe is it stronger. Might be, it right. might be stronger, and but Everclear is strong, and well, yeah, there's Everclear there's, there's even uh, uh, an alcohol in Montreal called alcohol, which just alcohol, but uh -huh. 90 like yeah. it's destructive. Yeah. But for some reason, Ray Neff boxes you. Yeah, box. Did you? Go, was <laughs> it a tape or was it in? in it person? was. So there was a thing in Toronto called a monologue slam, which still happens to this day, uh -huh. um, and it's great. It's like a great opportunity for actors to get on stage and like do their thing and like practice like compete together with mm -hmm. monologues and the winner wins like 300 bucks and like a belt saying they won and shit <laughs> right and like the first time i ever did that i was so nervous mm -hmm. i was shaking right yeah. and i'm like i gotta go up on stage and do this monologue oh, and i'm like i gotta take a shot so i took a shot right because i thought that was a shot of rain nephew is crazy that's not like a shot of casa <laughs> like it's not that's not a regular <laughs> shot bro like rain nephew you can't you can't drink that shit by yourself like you need chaser with that shit my grandfather told me you need ice 
You need ice. Yeah, You're gonna need ice. Like, yeah, and I was like, like, I'm good. Like I drink. I got. I'm Guyanese, Jamaican. Mm-hmm. I got all yeah, this, I got this in liquor like, this in my blood. This is what yeah, I do. Good. <laughs> Took this shot. It pumped me in the chest and did nothing Ooh. else. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't do Ooh. nothing else for my work. I was still nervous. Yeah. I was still shaking, and all I had was this shot of liquor in my blood. Yeah, it was hot on the stage. I, I, hot liquor too. <laughs> I kind of miss that because on, we haven't auditioned in person in three years since True. the pandemic, yeah, and plus yeah, six fact. months before that we were filming season one, mm-hmm. so we really yeah, haven't we auditioned in a rip. Mm-hmm. I miss that nervous feeling. Mm-hmm. There's no better feeling than after you do the audition and leave, you get like this like, high, yes, I did it. Like, this adrenaline high. That's yeah. why I like in person way better than right. self tapes because like it'll come back. It's like, coming back, but like, go on. Even when I'm there, bro. Like even when like when I'm walking in, I'm like, damn, I'm like a little nervous. Like I don't think I could do this shit. And you just step in the room. It's like, bro, I'm already here. I gotta do right. this shit anyway. And then you like, I right, bet, get it right. out the way. And then after, bro, it's just like. I bet. Right. It's like, I bet. Right. Yeah, you and just then, feel good, bro. It's yeah. like, you just feel so accomplished. You, you just right. accomplished so much. It gets <laughs> easier. It gets mm-hmm. easier every yeah, time. Like, dude, I remember the first year of me auditioning. I auditions, bro. bro. My first so year audition, scary. I'm like, I went, to the, I went to my first audition. I said, Mom, I'm never doing this again. Mm-hmm. You know, I swear really? To God, I said, I'm how old, never. How old were you? I was, mm, I was probably, this was after, this was after Un Antro Mundo. So I was probably... 12, yeah, 12 11 yeah. or 12 or some shit like that yeah. this was no 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 I was probably 10 actually yeah, you were a 10. baby yeah I was a baby yeah. for real yeah, this was right after I finished my first movie in Italy and then like cause I didn't audition for that shit right like I, they awful. literally saw me in a, in a music video and said this is the kid I want in my movie Dude, that's, that's unreal shout out to Silvio Mochino by the way hey, hey, yeah, hey. Um, that needs to happen more yeah, yeah bro, like, for he literally real. saw me in a music video bro like I didn't say a thing bro just a music video bro right and they chose me, so I'm like, wait, this is how you get into movies? Like, right, right. And then, after that, I started going, that's when I started auditioning. I'm like, my first one, I said, yeah, nah. Yeah, no. <laughs> not doing this anymore. Well, that's, how, that's <laughs> how you see a lot of child stars mm-hmm. who, I'm not saying like you're a child star, which you were, but like mm-hmm. you, see, you see a lot of kids who like grew up on Nickelodeon and stuff like that, they book something so young mm-hmm. because they look right, like the role, they're cute, they're this and that, mm-hmm. and then when they're off the show in six, seven years, they don't work again mm-hmm. because they're it's tough. they're not actually like they're not ready for the ringer of yeah. after the show's over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they were like, oh, like Michael. Obviously, he's auditioned since he's booked all these movies. He's done all these roles. He's done Ghost. This not amateur, but there's a lot of kids who will go six years on like a Disney show, and then all of a sudden they get out and they never work again because they just look like the role, but they don't have the chops yeah. or they don't have like the drive to go and do it. That happens mm-hmm. a lot in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Does it? A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. There's a lot of kids who are like working on like younger Disney. Like, like family channel shows and they film a lot of those out there yeah a lot of them i didn't know um and and you know they learn one way of doing it right Mm -hmm. right and they're on the show for a long time and they're just just they're used to acting and having a voice a certain way but they're growing up right so they still still got to keep that young voice and that young way of like comedy in their body Mm -hmm. and then you know now they're older and out in the real world and they're still doing the the, the old the young shit. stuff yeah, that don't work no more. Yeah, you know it's fact. it's that's a fact. It's like a whole reset. Once you're done with something, like that's the thing. Like you got to be resilient, bro. Like you gotta you gotta be ready to have to reset and really like start searching for new shit, right? Bro. Like because everything not gonna last forever, bro. right? You're like, unemployed. Once your job is yeah, yeah, unemployed, you're people done, don't get yeah, that. Bro, yeah. that's a fact. They just think they just spooky. rolls in. Like yeah. nah, you're fighting for your next job. Yeah. Imagine every. Like, imagine, you know, in the hardest business in the world, you're unemployed after every job. After every job. It's crazy. You gotta go back out there and again. Then, and then you and gotta book some... just apply for UE every time. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, I, I remember I auditioned for that show, Nikki, Ricky, Dicky, and Dawn. It was like a Disney <laughs> okay. show. Yeah, 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 it was like on Disney for a while. I remember I went in and they were like, um, because I would just play it real. Because mm-hmm. that's how I act. Like, mm-hmm. I don't go in, I don't, you know, yeah. and they're like, it needs to be. And more energy, up. more brighter. And it and it was going against everything I've ever learned. Bro. So a lot of those people get taught to be really bright and this and that. And then mm. all of a sudden they go and do something real and they're like, what, what is happening? Yeah. Exactly. A lot of those Disney actors mm. don't work after that. And I'm not, no shade to them. That's just the way they're trained. It's mm. just a matter of you like, having to... Could you imagine Michael growing up on power and every scene was like a gun in his head and this and that? Like, it's real for him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. I'm and sorry, then but going to do, do a Disney show afterwards where they're like, right. you, we, we need you to ham it up. Not ham it up, sorry. I don't mean to be disrespectful. But just, <laughs> we need you to up the... Energy and the the right. pep of it be hard, right? It's yeah. a whole It'd be very hard. It's a whole different because you're so used to. And you're from New York. Yeah, I'm from New York. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We not really. We not about like we. You know Bro, listen, like, man. <laughs> I auditioned for my first Disney <laughs> thing <laughs> when I was yeah. like 22. Do you remember your first audition? Yes. In person, for Crackhead. 
For a crackhead? Absolutely. What was it? Out, fresh out of college. That's fire. For that's a crackhead. Fuck, what was man. it for? Um, it's for this like sh this this feature film that was being shot in Toronto. I forgot the name of it now, but it was a while ago. And I remember wanting it so bad because obviously you just want. I'm fresh out of college. I want to work, right? Want a book, yeah. And I wanted it so bad, and I was doing, like, playing, like doing this crackhead, and this this dude was like, I need you to want, you know. Get more into like yeah. the idea Be of crack. Yeah, 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 the yeah. idea of like fiending for gonna, some crack. You know what I mean? And I was trying to play it more like it's like subtle and like this person was like, yes, they wanted what they wanted, but they wanted to appear that they didn't want it as right. bad, right? Mm -hmm. They were like, nah, you gotta be in the street, dirty and mm -hmm. itching and scratching. I was like, we just saw that in a bunch of movies, and right. that's yeah. the idea, right? Yeah. But it's really out here, you see these crackheads, you functioning, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's not really what crackheads do, like. Like, I have I mean, a podcast, you might see like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I didn't want to out you, bro, but you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's really shit, perfect though, example. Yeah. It's like, they just want you, they want you to give the same crackhead that you see in every movie. Exactly. Like, you trying yeah. to bring something different to it. Like, cause there's literally like, bro, we're in New York, we see a million, a million drug users a day. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? In the city, bro. And a lot of them really be fully functioning, chilling. Like, bro, like this shit is real. They be coming up to me like, yo, let me, I be like, nigga, you look cooler than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, some right. nigga came yeah. up to me asking me for $10. He had a helmet laying sweater on. I swear to my life. He's a bro. He I think I've seen that same cat. It, bro, he, it, he was a, in Manhattan. Yes, bro. He had a yeah. helmet ring hoodie on. He was he was asking me for time. I'm like, what the fuck? He wears that every day. That's he got real. one hoodie, but yeah, it, it's he got one. But it's I like, won't give it to him. Yeah. He's dripping. He's yeah. Dripping. And the most impeccable balance you've ever seen. Right? <laughs> yeah. Nah, that's oh yeah. Yo, facts. That's a fact. They be lean. Oh, lean. Oh, not falling. <laughs> Not uh, 90 falling, degrees, bro. just right. not no, falling, what? Not bro. even what is this? What is this degree? Right. What is this degree I don't know angle? What it is. Like, when Whatever you fold body folded, <laughs> right? Yeah, not really. <laughs> like, you're standing up and just like, literally folded in half. Folded, like, bro. bro. How are you not on your face? <laughs> that shit is crazy. Here's, here's the thing about um, like a director. So, was it a supporting role or a main role? Support, it was like a like supporting. So, yeah. I think as a like my director brain goes, um. It's their baby. It's their movie. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, that crackhead needs to be a crackhead for the main character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't want to be someone who, like, as actors, we go, how do we make it different? How do we make it me? How do, how, like, how do I make the character into what I want it to be? But mm -hmm. really, the director is just like, oh, no, you're just the crackhead, so be the crackhead yeah. for this. So I get what you mean because as, you know, artists, us three, we always want to bring something different to it because everyone does it the same way. Like, mm -hmm. I've done casting. I, I did you know, I've casted three or four things with the this lady. Um, oh, I forgot her name. She was great. Uh, she cast uh, Even Stevens. Oh and, wow! Um, oh, and, I, and I would just see everyone come in. I'm like, wow! Like every person is different, but a lot of people do it the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but it did teach me a lot. She told me a hilarious story where like Shia was like in the in the. Uh, um, uh, waiting room and he was like intimidating people. Really? Yeah, he was like, you're not gonna get this, go home. Oh! <laughs> I'm like, what a legend. That's <laughs> right. Oh, yo. Right. He's like, you're not gonna get this. He's like, people's moms were there and he's like, oh, your mommy brought you. <laughs> Crazy <laughs> shit. <laughs> right. Me and that nigga would have to get it. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I would have knuckled up with that nigga right in the waiting room and I would have booked the role too. Nigga. You know what? <laughs> I got to a place, fortunately with in-person auditions, thank God I got to a place where I, I was able, because I, I, I think the anticipation of an audition was so, so much for me that I would do the most. Right. I would like cut my hair every audition, mm. right? I used to have a Caesar and I would just cut my hair like that, have the little waves and all kinds of stuff and mm. just go. And I was like, I'm not presentable until I do this, mm. right? right? And I would put mm. like my best clothes on and go out to this audition and be so nervous mm. right. because mm. I felt like I had to do prepare for an audition and not prepare for the character. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then after I took this class, and this class was all like, stop presenting, stop acting, and just be this. Be. You know what I mean? Like, what's the truth for you in this moment? I know the character says, yeah. uh, the breakdown says, um, that this person's angry right now. This person's like yelling and screaming and all kind of stuff right, right now. But are you mad? Yeah. How you really feel? Because it'll be fraudulent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, then it looks fake. You know, like, I'm right. actually kind of happy right now. Well right. then, Play it like that. Right. Do the scene from there, and maybe you'll find a deeper truth. Right. Not maybe you it. will yeah. find a deeper truth. Yeah, right. Because the the lines are there to um, to guide you. It's like yeah. a roadmap. Yeah. But if if you're you know on the road trip and you're in a in a bad mood, but you're pretending to be happy, it's like mm. it's not going to be enjoyable. You know yeah. what I mean? You know? So it's it, you'll find it within the lines. Like if you're if you're in an argument with your girl in, in the scene, and you're happy. You're gonna get there. The lines will, will make yeah, you line, get yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll make you get That's there. That's literally what happened. Like, yeah, like, our, like the scene we had like last week. Right. Um, 
and I was just trying to get to a place that I couldn't get to after a while. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I was getting frustrated right. with myself, and like, that shit just helped, bro. And but that, it works, yeah, right? It works because so that true feeling lit. comes. Yeah, in. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, why can't I do this shit? Like, right. what's going on? Like, I want, because I, I, I knew what I wanted to do. And I'm like, why am I not getting it out? And I got so mad, and I just like, right. I just walked away for a second. I was just mad. As it came back, we did the next take, we did the next take. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's it, that's it. They yeah. said, check the gate. That's yeah. it, yep. yeah. The most common misconception with acting is people think it's it's pretending, and it's actually the opposite. Yeah, it's literally the it's, opposite. It's, it's literally trying to... Trying not to pretend. Right, like, it's just being is, real in the moment with, yeah. with two people as, mm -hmm. as opposed to, like, people think it's, oh, you're so good at lying, you're so good at pretending. It's like, no, I'm good at telling the truth Tell between the truth. what's happening between us. Mm -hmm. The scene is the roadmap of what is supposed to be going on between us, the imaginary circumstances. But what's going on between us, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think most people are like, oh, what's it like pre What's it like pretending? It's like, no, it's, it's actually the opposite. don't be pretending. We'd be mad as hell. This right. afternoon, Johnny. Uh, dude, I love this. This is an acting episode. Okay. This is a fire one. Yeah. 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 I love I like that. It one. I you love know, that. It's, it's like, it's... It, it was a fucking slap in the face, actually. Not a slap in the face. It was a wake-up call. You know, I always take it as a blessing because you got to. Right. But when I um I got because I got a call back for the actor studio. I didn't get I didn't get it like uh get in or get sent to the finals. Right. I got another call back, right? And so um at first I was like kicking myself. I'm like, damn, like, you know, I gotta go to it again and I gotta like, I'm not good. Maybe I'm not as good as I thought. And mm. cause I I'm so worried about me coming complacent and becoming comfortable yeah, and yeah, yeah. stuck in one way of doing it that I like to like challenge myself and do something else. Right. You know what I mean? And keep the fire going, right. you know? And so that's what part of the reason why I'm auditioning for it. And um uh Woody told that story um <laughs> about how, you know, we forgot the lines and stuff. <laughs> but <laughs> but you know what was fun what was fun about that moment but Fun about I prayed beforehand and I was like, let us just be in the moment, be present, be truthful with each other, right? So us having to like jump forward and and find it again was mm -hmm. was was that and it kept right. us alive and truthful in the moment. Mm -hmm. And when I got the notes back um, for the next callback was um, more deeper relaxation and more moment to moment truth. And at first. When I saw the audition, I was like, uh, the callback, I was like, ah, oh, man, I'm saying no, I'm not doing it again. Damn it, right? Uh, right? I got all of my ego. Right. And then I saw the notes, and I was I'm like, I'm on a motherfucking hit show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see the right. notes, you're like, oh, that's why I'm going to be that's, that, You know what I mean? And they were challenging me to go deeper. Right. And they were challenging me to be in the moment and not just because I'm supposed to be angry in this moment and mm -hmm. supposed to be like going crazy, just jump to there. Like, mm -hmm. how are you feeling in the moment? You feeling scared, you feeling happy, you feeling whatever, yeah. like bring that right. to truth to them. And that's what they were challenging me to do, mm -hmm. you know? Right. And when I, when I read that back, I was like, yeah, they're right, like they're right, <laughs> you know? Like that's what's gonna, that's what I want. That's what I want to convey, you know, as an artist and stuff. So, you know, like, and shout out to Woody for like even, being there for and me he's that a day, man, bro. I like, love cause back. Yeah. we're we're brothers, right? And like, I really truthfully felt like we took care of each other in that moment, and mm -hmm. we really were able to be brothers and bring that relationship to the stage, right? You know, That's fire. Do, do you have any like? Do either of you have any like uh, crazy audition stories of anything that went bad or went? I nearly left in tears one time. Oh, well, let's hear that, yeah. bro. I auditioned for Hamilton. Let's, let's just go acting oh, heavy in this episode. Oh, you auditioned for what? Hamilton. Oh shit. I thought the Broadway play. The Broadway play. Had it already anyway. been on Broadway? Yeah. Oh, it was. Nice. It was oh, they had just done the first one, right? Um, with with the legends, and and I, mean, I would have been nervous. I ain't gonna lie. Bro, I was, but I was locked in. I was so warm, and had so such so many tools to be like, this is how I prep my voice. This is how I prep my body. Make sure I'm relaxed and not nervous in the room. Da da da. da. Um, and I could rap. Mm. So I'm like, well then, Hamilton's rap. Right. Mm. So I'm fine, right? And I was auditioning for Hercules Mulligan. Never forget it, because it was a bigger, bigger, giant Hercules, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Supposed to be big and bold and out here. And so I had no reference of what the character's supposed to be like. And I hate I've when never happens. auditioned for a I hate musical. When that happens. And so I didn't know this was like a musical audition in that sense. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? I've never auditioned for a musical in my life. Yeah. And I thought it was gonna be a regular audition on camera or just like for a theater, right? right? Just be there, do your scene, and be with a person and then bounce mm. and so i show up after prepping and trying to learn this song every day and learn this song every day and try to do it but only learning it based off of the song like hearing the song and hearing the the, the piano mm. and and trying to match it and catch up to the rhythm and so we get there 
We do. This sounds like it's mad. <laughs> bro, I'm getting anxious just telling the story, bro. Because, mm. like, it's just me, the cast director, and this person who's playing my accompanying piano. Uh-huh. Mm. And I have to start the song. <laughs> Hercules Mulligan and Taylor Spine right, on right. the British government. <laughs> and da-da, right? But do it to a live pianist who's, like, playing the song. Right. But... I can't hear it over me rapping uh, and I'm losing my place and then forgetting the lyrics and all this stuff. So I stumble and she's like, okay, so fine. Take a deep breath, go again. I'm like, all right. And now I'm nervous. Right. And now I'm like, all right. <sighs> Hercules Mulligan. Yeah. And, she, and I mess up again because I forget the next line. Mm. I'm like, can I go again? And she's like, yeah, go ahead. And again, and I stumble through the song and I get through and I make it and I'm done. And I leave, and I'm a gr- I'm maybe 23 at the time, yeah. and I'm like starting to tear, mm-hmm. tears starting to flow, and I'm like, what? I'm never doing that again. Yeah. I'm never doing that again, because yeah. I had no idea what it takes right. to to be a music. There are people with triple threats. Patina, yeah. who, Patina, who, yep. like, you know, who Patina. really do this? Who Bro, went- she's literally about to be filming this next season of Raising Canaan and doing a Broadway show at the same time. Insane. That's legendary to me. That's yeah. insane. Like, you know what I mean? That's How like, do you even balance that's that? That's a dream, bro. That's a dream. Yeah. Oh, that's a but dream. But I know, I know what you mean. It's like, yeah, auditioning, it's, especially music. I've never auditioned and, and, for And musical. on the top of, of not having like no reference on what the character was Zero supposed reference. to be, like I hate that shit too. Like, Because sometimes I've gotten, I've gotten self-tapes and they've given me a, like a, a role, but they don't give me no breakdown of what the character well, is supposed well, to be. Sometimes I do like that because... Because then you can make it your own. Right. You feel mm-hmm, me? And then, mm-hmm, they really, mm-hmm. then they really see like your, your skills on like how you can control the character right. and really make it what you want to make it. I that actually kind of hate when it's like nerdy guy, this and that, because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm naturally, you know, a confident person in right. a conversation. So I have to act when it's like nerdy guy. It's like, hey, I, you know yeah. what I mean? Like you have to tap into something different. I like when there's no uh, breakdown because, yeah, you can just kind of make it your own. That is, that is and true, too. Have that it be what too. you want it to be. I guess it's like a 50 50 type thing. Like, I don't know, man. I like yeah. I like both actually. Now that now that you said it that way, it does it does make more sense. Yeah. Well, going off of what you said about playing nerds, and me and Kiana go back and forth in our relationship about this, because I'm like, I feel like I'm the cool one in our relationship. Mm-hmm. Like I'm the one that brings like the cool flavor to the table. Like yeah. I like jazz music and like hip hop and shit. <laughs> right. and, like I just got a vibe, you know just what I mean? Jamaican shit. You and know she what like saying? she smokes. I don't smoke, so it she's is. like, I smoke weed, so like I'm the cool one. Like, <laughs> Off rip. I'm like, yeah. smoking reads mainstream, so like, nah, like, you're not that I don't cool. do mainstream shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> and every time I get an audition, like, that's not, like, something specific, I guess, the general consensus is, like, nerd. Mm. Nerd, like, right. person who can, like, geek out on something, who's mm. really, like, smart, intellectual, scientific, da 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 And I'm like, oh, I think I come off as a nerd. <laughs> I think, like, my, like, my, like, my, what I portray mm is more nerdy than anything else. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I had the opposite where I was always, um, like when I would do a tape, like I was always uh, like a little cocky, this and that, because everything I've ever gone out for for like four years was, um, you know, rich kid asshole with mm. a lot of money uh, who drives yeah, a yeah. Corvette, like mm. stuff like that. But that's why I had a lot of problems early on in my career. I wouldn't book, I didn't book shit for like the first three and a half years of, of auditioning mm. is because I was nervous going into the room but mm. every single fucking thing I auditioned for was confident yeah, guy. Yeah, you had to be confident oh, guy. Confident yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. So I come so in the room, and I'm, it's like I've never really like acted before, and I'm in front of Grey's Anatomy, casting directors, this and that. I'm like confident, you know, kid. And then you go in the room, and you're like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. And yeah. you're like, this is not the kid. Uh-huh, because uh-huh. the second you walk in the room, that's when the audition starts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It don't start with a line the lines. They're getting your vibe. They're getting kind of who you are. And then that's kind of how I started booking and casting directors would call me back because they like Gianni. My mm. work always spoke for itself. And they're like, yeah, I, we can trust him on any set. But they always liked me. I would make them laugh, this and that. And then I'd leave and, they, and I wouldn't maybe get that role, but mm. they would call me back and go the next week. I would go in for the same casting directors all the time because they're like, mm-hmm. oh, I know he can do it. And we say this like almost every episode too. Right. Like, Leave your mark in that room, bro, because right. they're gonna call you back. They're gonna call you back. You know, you know what's so weird is that I like I thought about this recently because I haven't auditioned since pre power. Uh-huh. I've never auditioned um, in person, um, not being dead broke. So mm-hmm. I've always been in shitty clothes in a shitty car, going staring at the gas meter as I'm mm-hmm. driving to the audition. Mm-hmm. Now I'm like. 
all I have is like purple jeans and Javante. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what do I wear to be on this set? That's like, what am I supposed to put on? Like, isn't that crazy? If I wear this, they might hate me. Like, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I've never had like diamonds and stuff like that. And now, or am I gonna drive to the audition in my Porsche? Yeah, really. <laughs> like, what the fuck do I? Isn't I that mean, weird? ain't nothing wrong with that. But you don't I, need to see what you're driving. But it's in the weird. Back. You you know <laughs> your you like my feeling was always not I need the job, but like I just want to get this like and work. Mm -hmm. And now I'm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm successful in my career, so I'm like, I could be more picky, but going to the audition is going to be such a different experience in L.A., like, having money, like, oh, I got to leave the Rolex in the car. You know what I mean? Like, or take the bus. It's weird to think now, about. they break it in cars in L.A. Don't leave it in the car. Yeah, leave the Rolex right. in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or take the bus to, yeah, yeah. to your audition. And then, like, so then you're, like, grounding yourself. You know what I mean? Right. Or some J. Cole shit, like, riding, yeah. the, riding the bike through New York City while you're the biggest fucking rap artist in the world at the moment. That is huge. Yeah, he rode by our set. Remember yes, that? Yes, he did. He did? Oh, you weren't By there. By the grace of God, this man was there. I met you J. Cole. You and me had a scene together. And this Yo, that's guy. crazy. Yes. I didn't even know that. I just brought that shit up. Bro, we met J. Cole he last was on a bike. season. He was on that's a bike. That's crazy. And he was so cool, so down to earth. And I started getting so nervous mm -hmm. because I never thought I'd be nervous meeting J. Cole. I'm like, he's mm -hmm. Aquarius. I'm Aquarius. Mm -hmm. We got it. We locked in. Mm -hmm. This man met me like he was a Jamaican man, okay? <laughs> I came and said, Yo, what up, bro? He mm -hmm. like this and went, mm. Well, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, all right, because you don't know me. Right. Right. And, it's COVID, and it's COVID. Right. Mm -hmm. But like you don't know me. Like, you know what I mean? I get it. Mm -hmm. So we're talking, and I'm about to fill the space with listen, my dude. When you said, I'll be coming in peace, but fuck me, best be where the other like I was about to rap for this nigga, right? <laughs> and Meanwhile, we're literally in the middle of a scene right we're now. In the middle we're of in scene. the middle of a heist scene yeah. on the street of New York. And I'm like, yay, you don't. Know, you're working too. Like you're in your environment. You're doing. I don't give a. I've been listening to this man every single day mm. for years. Mm. For, but but when he dropped the off season, this album was crazy. I was right. I was going crazy. So I'm playing it all the time, and he was in my head all the time. So now I'm he, he's here, and I'm like, oh no, like <laughs> all that confidence I thought I had went out the window. Yeah, I turned right. to a little kid. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. I but then to he a saw, fan. But then he saw that we were. He was like, oh, what are you guys doing? We're like, oh, we're filming Power right now. He goes, oh, that's pretty cool. Mm. He, he, he like knew that we were artists and kind of. You did it. You did. Did I say it? You I, I, kept, saw it I saw you struggle. I was like, I was like, Power? <laughs> <laughs> you kept it. You kept it focused. Right. Mm. You kept it being like, yeah, I mean, we're just here Gianni, working. Yeah, he's that type of guy. Like in any situation, though. Like I always shout out to Yan because <laughs> I'm like, because I'm like, he kept us, in, like in and out. You know what I mean? All right, well, we're gonna go back to work and da 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 da. Great to meet you. Boom. That's yeah. fire. And I'm like, listen. I was gonna go crazy. Like, thank you so much. Like, you know what I mean? I have a gr I had a, a great memory of meeting J. Cole, and I didn't fuck it up. Right. Mm. <laughs> That's fire. That's fire. We'll meet him again. Maybe we'll get him on the pod. Yeah, yeah. Like, yo, 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 we'll get him on the pod. Pull up, man. Yeah. Chop it up with the boy. Chop it up with the crew. Um, so do you remember your auditions? Now, now we'll go into into a little bit of ghost stuff. But I, dude, I love the acting conversation. Bro, that was yes, fun. Because when I talk about it, I remember about how much fun it is. Because yes. sometimes yeah, you remember like, the road you went through. You remember right. all the trials and tribulations, all the no's, all the yeses. Like you remember everything you've done, like to get to where you are now. So that shit is just fun. Like damn, I went through all of this shit. Now I'm doing like this I remember, I remember the shit from when I was a kid, bro. Yeah, it's crazy. Bro. Yeah, it, sometimes you take it for granted too. Like I remember being in acting class and being like. I would literally murder to be a series regular on a show. Mm. And then the second you're a series regular on a show, you're like, all right, bet, where's, where's my franchise? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, you're like, never happy. Yeah, you want more. You as want more. As an actor, you want more because more. You, you, then they put you on this pedestal and you're like, why? Well, it's like, now going? I got to do something else after this. Right. It's like, once you do something, it's like, if you don't do nothing, they're going to look at you like, Right. Like, I think it goes back to that that, that mentality of like you gotta you broke after this. Yep. Right. You gotta right? reset. You're not broke, you but like you're jobless after like when the show you can go forever. You right. So you're, you're um, so you gotta be trying to work on the next thing and trying to build the next thing and build to the next thing and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And right. there's that feeling of uh, of scarcity and like a finality, right? right? Mm -hmm. But like when we realize that there's a, like an abundance of these things, right. abundance of work for us. We're artists, we're actors, we're you know entrepreneurs. We're you know we have a, like a plethora of things that we can mine from. You Facts. know what I mean? That's a yeah. fact. But uh, there's something I want to say. Oh, Daniel, I want to shout out Daniel. Facts. Daniel Bellman. Yes. Yeah, yes. his episode comes shout out. out to the oh, it already came out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah,
get to play basketball together. And I've never played basketball with somebody I couldn't get a shot shot over. Yeah. Ever in my life. He's fucking huge. I, I was fucking. I'm good at basketball. Right. And this guy. We all got a hoop one day. Yeah, we do. Because I, I will rock anybody except for Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I bet. Cause, you know, so we were, we were hanging out and we were talking and talking about this show and how excited we are for the season and how much we love acting and how much we love being a part of this thing and that, you know, it's huge and all these things. And we're also getting to like, okay, yeah, well, I want to make sure that like we can, you know, let this build into the next thing and right. we can continue to work and continue to thrive because we've never had shit. And Ooh. so like f- to go from that place to working and ha- right. getting some shit and then mm. we're gonna keep that shit going. Gotta and he goes, when did the role stop being enough? And just let that hang in the air for a second. And I was like, what do you mean? Yeah. Cause I'm like, I'm getting caught up on my dreams and fantasies of what right. we can do. Mm. And he's like, when did that, when did the book and the role and being this character stopped being enough for us. And I was like, oh my God. I know, man. That's so That's, that's so a crazy true. ass question. That's so <laughs> true. Because I feel like as actors, we all go through that. You're right. It's, it's like a, what, what do we do after this because of the job thing? Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I just think the work for me is, uh, I'm coming to the fact that that's enough. Like yeah. the fact that I get to come to work with my best friend in the day, my, be- my best friend in the world, I get to go to the day and do that. And I show up with people I love and I just get to play and I get to make the crew laugh. Like that's enough for me. I ain't gonna lie, yeah. Being on Ghost is definitely enough, bro. Like yeah. right. the chemistry, the fun we have, like just the vibe that we all bring to each other is just like, Right, and, and sometimes yeah. you get caught up in the nice things. Yes. You get caught up in the, oh, yes. I can afford this if I yes. renegotiate and do this and yes. that. Yes. But uh, the work is, you know, is starting to become enough where I, I went through season one being happy. Season two, I was like, fuck, I want to get to the next level. And season three, towards the end, I'm like, um, I'm gonna just going to see what comes with the work because yeah. you get to in your head and you're like, I, you start hating you st- it. Yeah, yeah. You, start, you, start in one, you start wanting so much, you don't appreciate what you have right, already. Exactly. It's, like, it's, it's, it's a lot that comes right. with this shit. I feel like that's a deep part of the human condition that is, isn't like explored and talked about enough. Mm. Is, right. that, is that taking something for granted, but also like, for, it's not because, we don't take something for granted because we get used to it. Mm. I feel like we forget. Yeah, right. and it's so common too. Take, taking things for, for granted is such like, happens so much. And I, I even fault myself for, for that shit a lot. Like, I'd be like, damn, I don't appreciate a lot of things enough, bro. Like, i really be looking at life, like, it'd be like the nights where I can't fucking sleep. Like, I'd just be in my bed. Like, I'd literally be in my bed from 10 to, like, 4 in the morning just thinking about life. Like, damn, like, this is such a blessing. Like, why don't? Why am I well, not? It's more a blessing because like, you're with two girls. That's the blessing. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Michael. You just told me the story. Before. That's it why it's a blessing. Let's be fucking real. No, I know you're right. Like, you're right. For me, it's like I just be thinking, like, damn, like I have so much to like to be thankful for, and I'm not thankful enough sometimes. Right. And I really mm-hmm. be thinking about that. But shit. that's like, everyone. That's why the richest people in the world are the most miserable. Yes. Because, like, a, a lot, I remember when I went and filmed that movie in Mississippi, like, a lot of those people had nothing, but they were so happy. Yes. Just to come on a movie set, and they were just, like, the happiest people in the world. And I'm, mm-hmm. and I'm there, the lead of the movie, and I'm sitting there like, oh, fuck, when is this yep. day going to be over? Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. It's like, crazy like to think I about. Caught up, I get caught up in right. doing shit like that so much. I'm like, look at all these people around me that appreciate everything they have, and... And it might not be as much as the next person. It might not be as much as what, like, you know what I'm saying? But right. they appreciate it no matter what it is. And like, yeah, gotta, yeah there's, there's a lot of unself-aware people. But I Absolutely. feel like everyone on our cast is pretty aware of what we have mm-hmm. and, Absolutely. and what we get to do. I think that's why we love working with each other so much. Because right. nobody's, nobody's a turd. Right. Yes. You know that's what I mean? Nobody's a turd. Nobody's like, Besides Shane Johnson. Johnson but it, I, 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 I love Shane. All right, we'll get some fan questions for you. Because we yes. really talk no power. But honestly, like, what a great conversation. Nah, yeah, nah, we just still talk about some power. Like, we, we, yeah. Yeah, well, we have fan questions okay. that are right, well, that are it, mostly it. power stuff. All right, but um, so uh, what's something that your character? This is Jimmy Bones, Jimmy and, Bones and they right. said, "What's Bones. something that your character requires that has made you a better artist?" Seeing the world through Drew's eyes has put me into a space of, and also being more fashionable. Right. Um, me they too. Put us in some nice ass clothes, bro. Shut up, Frank. Shout out to Frank. Frank. You know what I mean? But like, fly since I was 12. Man. I already know Michael is getting food brought into this room right now. <laughs> Why do we not have a, a DoorDash sponsor or Yo, something? DoorDash, what's up? Like, what's what's happening? Us? We he give you, does we this give like you every Addies. other episode. <laughs> I'd be is hungry. That, I ain't gonna lie. What is that? Lamb over rice. Lamb over rice? Oh, Good Lord. Yeah, the bros just... Everybody eat something crazy. I'm sorry, go on. No, it's all good. It's all good. Eat, man. 
yeah, like uh, seeing the world through Drew's artist's eyes. Because I've never allowed myself to see the world through a visual artist's eyes. Right. Mm. I've only ever seen the world through like a, a, whatever we are, like a performer, act, a okay. performer exactly. right? Um, and maybe uh, musically, because I make music and I make beats and all kind of stuff. So, we gotta cook up. Um, bro, so down. We gotta cook up. All day, all day, all day. Bro, everyone that comes on the show makes music and beats. Why am I such a loser? <laughs> no, it's not even like, it's not even like. It's something I love to do because it was like, I got to a place where I'm like, I, there's the music I want to hear, I want to make. Right. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Exactly. That's what I was doing like like a few years ago. I'm like, man, nobody making this shit. I'm about to just make it and listen to it myself. Like, I don't even, exactly. I don't even got to, I don't even got to put it out. I just want to make it so I can listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm, about, I'm about to go on my Kanye rant right now. But um, before Drake <laughs> sampled Flowetry, <laughs> it's getting late. Before he did it on his new album, mm. I did that shit. Did Say you? Guy. Yes, I did. Nobody oh, heard man. it. Doesn't fucking matter because I did that shit. <laughs> nah, it did ass be like that though, because I be hearing some. I be hearing songs. I'm like, damn, I should have dropped this shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I'm like, yo, I did this sample. Like, what the fuck? Why did I drop this? Like, what's going on? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That shit is. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was tight because I'm like, oh, he took that sample. Like. It's good. You yeah. did a good job. You did a better yeah. job than I did. Yeah. But I did because I didn't have tools. Right. That's all. Right. But um, yeah, seeing the world through Drew's artist eyes and and be you know allowing myself to embrace being more fashionable and and seeing more colors in the world has mm -hmm. helped my work is, is so much because I've allowed myself to see things that I would have probably seen as like weird. That's a weird like. Artist rapper, like, why would the, uh, this person put an umbrella upside down and make call that art? Like, you know what I mean? Like, but now I've seen it like, okay, it's a different perspective, you know? And like, I've allowed myself to go to museums more and go to, um, I used to go to the Brooklyn Art um, Museum a lot. And, 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 uh, and seeing the world, like seeing like gardens and flowers and, and poetry and how much I used to, like, grew up loving Japanese culture and, right. and the things that they brought to the table. So I was just been like, Seeing the world through new eyes yeah. has been the greatest thing I've ever Yeah, it's so seen. cool. Like, Daniel got to play a little basketball. You got to do stuff like that. Brayden didn't really get to do anything. I mean, I hooked up with a couple other girls, but other than that, like, I was but like, you know what I mean? But Brayden's just a rich asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like through Brayden, you got to manifest uh, wealthiness. Right, right. You know what I mean? That's I like that. Call that into your life. Because yeah. that's something that, like, will continue to grow. Right. Mm -hmm. And now you've been able to manifest more hustles and more ways, revenue streams and right. stuff like that in your life. I really love the, the the characters that we have to play because we learn so much in the real like in the real world right. playing these characters. Like, bro, growing up, like being like being Tariq, bro, that shit literally changed my life, like to the point where like I just look at shit so different compared to like before. Like, especially when my role started getting heavy, heavy, like season three, season four, I really started paying attention, being more observant just like to the people around me. Like like you really like like cause Bro, Tariq was a kid that grew up around people he couldn't trust. So, like, that shit opened my eyes in the real world. Like, yo, like, I can't really trust motherfuckers either. You know what I'm saying? So, That's like, so, so shit like that, like, that shit really helped me, like, growing up and getting older. Like, got to watch out for the people around you. Shit like that really helped me become a, a, a better person. Shit like Michael's that. sitting there like, how do I kill that motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and it also forced like, you to see the value in people like, that you can trust in your life, you know? Mm -hmm. People that you keep close to and like, cause I know you keep so much of your family close, you take care of your family, it's just, it's so damn important. You know that, what I mean? That's the most important part, especially when you have so, like, when we have all these blessings, bro, the main part, sharing it with the fam and taking care of the fam, bro. Mm -hmm. That's really, the, mm -hmm. that's the best, like, that's the, that's the biggest blessing I think I have, like, obviously, I love Rolexes, obviously I love the heart. <laughs> I love all that shit, but like, at the end of the day, like, when I really be chilling with my friends, bro, and we really be around each other just laughing and smiling, like... It's the best. I be like, damn, bro, life is good. Like, I'm, I'm with my niggas right now. Like, we having fun. Like, it's just, like, shit like that is just dope, bro. Yeah. I love that shit. Yeah, I agree. Um, all right, we got Myren... Myren Mc Michaela said... Myren. In what, Myren. <laughs> in what ways would you say you relate to your character the most? I feel like Drew and I are very intelligent. And Drew's, mm -hmm. playing Drew's allowed me to embody more of my intelligence mm -hmm. and take that seriously and challenge my mind more and expand my mind more. Um, I think um, uh, Drew also being um, the middle one in the family and just want to keep the family close and, and be set up almost to like embody a prophecy and not be sure if he's ready to do that. Um, I felt like I related to that in so many ways. Like my, my dad 
has a story about like when I was born, he took me and like raised me up mm -hmm. and like gave me back to God. <laughs> and I and it, it, you're always destined to be great. And I'm like, I kind of felt like I had to live up to that right. all my life. Now look at you. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now look at you. Hoping, step back. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. um, but at times not being sure if, if that was, if I was meant for that or if, that, if I could, you know, you know right. what I mean? And not being sure if, that, if that's what I wanted. Maybe I would just want to be an astronaut. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. That's awesome. And then we have um, uh, Deja underscore 435. Does he have a dream show he wants to be on? If so, which one? Show? This is a dream show. For sure. That's 100%. what I wanted. That was, a, that was the answer that yeah, I wanted. Because I, mean, sure. I, I knew, I knew you were going to say that. that. Yeah. I knew that was going to be the answer. Um, there's a couple of dream roles I want to play. I want to play Huey P. Newton so bad. Mm. Huey P. Newton. And what was the other... I don't know who that is, but who, who's the other person that you're like, I want to play so bad? I'm going to say it out here I right now. To, that's why I did this, because I want you to say it. Because I want you to put it in the universe. Because I'm going to play Marlon Brando. My baby. Um, I'm playing Kanye West, 100%. Yes. Yeah. I'm playing, we got the pout going on, we got the same head shape, we got the, like, I, I, like, even your voice is like very like similar to him, like, like, it's weird. Like, now that you said it. But it's, it, he's, he's, he, uh, he's somebody I wanted to embody for like, um, like, so, like so, as long as I can remember. Yeah. Not just, it's because of the way he embodies music and has changed, has been boldly changing music and also because to me, Kanye West lives scripture for the most part to a T. Like, like they say, like, if God is for me, who can be against me? Right. Right? Mm -hmm. if, if, if you're meant to do this thing and you pray on it and you believe it and you go out and do it, you don't have to worry about shit. Right. And so you watch the documentary. You see Kanye's example from when he was in, like, 04, 05, 06, yeah. 07, saying that he's going to do things and then did the things. Mm -hmm. You know, and people are like, nah, you can't do that. Yeah. Nah, you can't you do that. that mm. Somebody, I'll never forget this. A girl in my high school told me I wasn't that good. And that like, because I was like, I want to be an actor. I told the class that. Why are you dick about it? <laughs> she was like, really? You want to be an actor? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, you're not that good. Oh my God. And I was like, what's oh. her name? Say it. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> we're kidding. friends. We're friends now. We're cool now. We're cool now. We're cool now. <laughs> Shout out to homegirl. But uh, she knows she is. I take what I said back, my friend. My friend. Don't be trying to doubt my man's like, that. see what he does out here in these streets. <laughs> and, you know, um, and that, obviously, you, know, you take it as fuel to keep going and stuff, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, but um, I'm going to play Scott Disick in that movie. Whoa! <laughs> listen. <laughs> listen, man. My but God. that's great. I, I wanted you to say that. I wanted you to put that out there because I know we had a conversation that you really want to do that, and I think that'd be such a great role for you. Oh, thank you so Good much. Good morning, Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so they much. They got to catch you for that. Yeah. No one yeah. knows. Um, who? So you watched Power, obviously, before... Um, you got cast, right? Were you a massive fan, me, little, like, like... I was a massive fan in season one, two, and then I thought the show was finished. Right. And um, I didn't know they were going to keep coming out with more and more. Because like, I just always felt like shows were getting, like, fin like finishing right. after, like, season one and two. So I was like, all right, dope. And then it took a little bit to, for season three to come out, I felt. And so I started getting on other shows. So I watched Get Down and all kind of stuff. And... I just like felt, and then my parents watched it like religiously, right? right? And so they were like, oh, you're not watching Power? Like, we're just on season four. And I'm like, oh, season four? Like, right. oh, I gotta go through all this work. Right. I gotta, I gotta, I'm so far behind. And I kept seeing the, the memes and the gifts online yeah. and the spoilers. So part of the culture, you're like, I feel like I'm missing out on the world. Mm -hmm. For me, I, I loved Power so much because I felt like Omari Hardwick validated me as an actor because I saw his, mo his, his emotions, his impulses, his depth, his voice, bro, and so bro, where so, his so voice full. came from. He yeah, he was so, so good, full, bro. so right. alive. It's a thousand things going on in his head at one time. He is so alive as right. an artist, and he, I, I, I feel like I'm alive as an artist. And I've, I've gone through, because Canada, sometimes, the casting directors, and not to knock them and stuff, but sometimes you got to fit a box. Right. You know what I mean? You got to be small. You got to minimize yourself. And... You know, I so, so much. I've been told so many times, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down, internalize it, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. Right. And to see um, or Mark Hardwick come out and embody this character so much from the foot bottom mm -hmm. to his head top, mm -hmm. and still make it nuanced and enough that it fits the frame. That's that moment when he was telling that was his name, man. You know, uh, Fifty's son in the show. Yeah, Sean. 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 Yeah. 
where he was about to kill him and didn't want to kill him so bad. And he knew he had to kill him, and 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 he found out about the stuff, and he was and and dude was like, "Yo, I'm so sorry, bro." And he's like, "Go!" Right. And he's like, "I don't want to kill you, go." Yeah, like, you know what I mean. Go, and he, when he said he said go from like the right. ground underneath the ground, mm-hmm. to, that you shit. know what I mean. And <laughs> I, wrote, I was just like, yes, like that, that locked me into the show and to see everybody else's performance complimenting those things. It was, right. it was, oh my God, it was beautiful. And, and then seeing the memes and all kind of stuff got me back on. Oh, I'm like, I got to watch this shit again. Yeah, I and can't was, miss out on this I shit. Lo- but I was locked in. And then mm-hmm. I got the audition before season six came out and I was like, oh, dope. That's why I was watching the right. show. <laughs> that's, that's, I remember that's, that's when fucking that's crazy when, yeah. you know yeah. yeah. that's so interesting because I love this conversation because it keeps bringing me back to being excited about acting because we really haven't touched on acting much mm-hmm. but it brings me back to that um, uh, with the character breakdown stuff mm-hmm. um, I forgot I, I wanted to say this earlier um, it, it if you try and, and fit that box if you try and fit a narrative of what oh I think this is what they want mm-hmm Death. Mm-hmm. Death. Because if you're playing into something like, oh, they're not going to like me if I'm this, they're not going to like me if I'm that, I have to play it like this for them. Mm-hmm. If you're playing into what you think they want, death. you never win. Because you'll never book that role. You always want to do it the way you want to do it because it's going to be different. It's yeah, going to be... Not because they... Not right. because you think they want It's going to be your yeah, choice. So right. actors, do not ever... Do, because I guarantee you... I mean, listen... Courtney wrote the fuck out of Ghost. I don't think she could have even imagined what... Maybe she did. Maybe I'm wrong, but, like, what Omari brought to that, there was so much depth and levels and, and everything going on that I, I don't think any writer could could have um, bro, Omari really pictured that. Bro, really killed that huge shit, gift, bro. Right. He's like, a huge gift as an actor. Yeah. Bro, huge. For everyone, too. Yeah. Like, even if you never worked with O, like, you just see it on the screen, like, He's dedicated, bro. Absolutely. Like, he's dedicated. And you know, just, he, I've been on set, I was on set with him damn near every day for eight, nine years straight, bro. And I've seen all of that shit. That's like, a masterclass. Bro, bro, what? That's why you're so good. Because you're able, you were able to, like, receive, right? Mm-hmm. you know what I mean, I so much. I picked up so much from O, from Joseph, from everyone on that set. But O, though, like, I literally, like, I followed his footsteps. Like, every day I was on set, I'm like, how could I learn a little more from O? Wow. Right? And, like, this is That's not. also a testament <laughs> to you in your mind, though. Mm-hmm. Some some artists will be like get an ego and not want to, mm-hmm. you know, reject it. Right. Well, that's right? why when shows get later towards the end of the seasons, people have egos against each other. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I never want to be that. Never. Mm-hmm. I just want to be happy. I love all y'all niggas. Right. I love all y'all niggas. Right. <laughs> but yes. So moral of the story, uh, I don't think Omari Hardwick went into audition for Ghost and did what he thought they wanted him to do. He did what he he, he knew what he was gonna bring to right. the, to that character. So he, do what you want to do. I know. Oh, I know. Oh, he right. said. Yeah, I'ma go to this. Or I'ma I'm do it. And I'm that's what makes like a motherfucker great. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Sorry, I, I I feel like I cut you off both a lot, but I was so excited this time. No, 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 right. I love it. Mm. Um, I want you to come back on and recap uh some point. There, pick an episode for season three that you love, okay. and we'll have you come on and recap yeah, that episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody got to pick their favorite episode from yeah, from the season, sure, and then we come sure. back and spin back in. It's gonna be fun, recap. dude. We're just gonna be able to do this. Like we'll re- we're gonna recap Kanan. Maybe you can even watch the Kanan episodes and come on and recap them with us. Like we have. Have no plan. We're just here to have fun and give the, you know the fans what they you literally want. Literally, just be going with the flow, right? Yeah, I love that, man. And I, I got I got thick flow. legs over here. Everyone's Sunday. been commenting on that, so whatever. <laughs> Is there anything that you that you felt like you wanted to say or anything that you wanted to touch on? There is something I want to touch on, actually. It's so funny you ask. It's funny because I had a feeling because mm. I know that about you and I love that about <laughs> you. Um, it might not be what you what you think. But. I don't. I don't think. I don't have any notion. I just know that you're an artist and you love expressing yourself. So mm. I. There was something I watched when you guys um, were, were doing the um, the Woody episode. And uh-huh. There was uh, I forgot what the quote was, but you but you you book ended the quote with like fuck I think it. it was fuck it yeah 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 yeah, right. yeah, fuck, yeah. fuck it, it your right? fuck it meter yeah mm-hmm. how much you can be okay with embarrassing yourself mm-hmm. um, to do this work. Mm-hmm. It not only is it be okay with embarrassing yourself being uh, being okay with embarrassing yourself, but but go to that like. Right. Like be wanting fearless, to, be yeah, wanting to and, just try and, new shit and be like, you know, I might look like a dickhead when I, when I do this for the first time, but fucking let's see what goes on. Like that's why we have some of the greatest music. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, you know, I'm, you know how weird it is to go on a song 
and rap like a robot, like Nicki Minaj does. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and do that stuff and be bold. I'm a sick fuck. I like your quick fuck. Yeah, 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 just do that shit. <laughs> but, but don't. But didn't we do that in high school? Mm-hmm. Banging on the fucking tables yeah, right. and just talking yeah, exactly. shit and like whatever comes to our mind, we, school, we just start to flow it. Right. And even and those jokes and the funny words that rhyme, we just embody and do. Mm-hmm. And these artists that make these this music mm-hmm. embody that, and that's why we love that music. Mm-hmm. It's the same in the act. Well, you see it. We're you familiar see it. with this shit. Like, oh, we did this and like you don't even like you don't really think of of that in the moment but the reason that you connect to this shit is because like in the back of your mind it's like yo i was was doing this not too long ago like exactly so familiar and you don't even notice how familiar it is with you that's why a lot of the music now that's like like you know people bringing back these samples and shit like everyone is fucking with because like music from back in the day is like they bringing it back and it's like how could you deny that shit yeah how could you deny that's literally what 50 said like i remember we was on set like on uh season four no season yeah, season three or four, and we were just talking about music. He's like, listen, man, catch these motherfuckers, just bring old music back and just make it new. And I'm like, what? That's real. And that's literally what's going on right now. All the crazy music that's blown up right now is all sample-based music. Yep, yep. Sample-based, man. Yep. Yeah. That shit is fun, too. I love sampling music. Same, like, same, same, same. same. <laughs> that shit is fun as hell, same. bro. That shit is yeah. mad fun. Yeah, that's why you see a, a lot of uh, like great actors are young children because they don't have any... Um, uh, no inhibitions. Right. Mm-hmm. There, there's there's no like, oh, I'm going to look dumb. They're yeah. just kids just playing. Mm-hmm. So playing. that's why they'll just do whatever in front yeah, of the camera. Like, that oh, that kid's fact. so good. It's that like, no, they're not in their head like, oh, fuck, I'm going to look stupid right now. Yeah, like, sometimes they're just, like, like, that has be thinking that. And then like, right. like the other day, like when we was filming our scene, the same scene that I was fucking getting pissed off at, like, I was like... Fuck it, whatever. Yeah. 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 But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I feel like we've gotten so comfortable with our crew. Mm-hmm. Everyone yeah, is there yeah, to support yeah, us. Yeah, 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 I've yeah, never yeah, yeah, once, yeah. which I do kind of miss that nervous feeling because mm. I was nervous season one. Bro, I'm more comfortable in a scene than I am walking around off set. You know what yeah. I mean? So now I do kind of miss that feeling because everyone is so on board with what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you go on a new set, you don't know people. You got to yeah. act in front of them. But you got to get comfortability. But I do miss that feeling. That is a fact. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, like, and there's something to like the comfortability I've gotten, which, is like, which I like. I was talking to Keanu about this yesterday. I was like, I like being comfortable in a sense because now I feel safe right. to do mm-hmm. anything. Right. Right. Um, and I want to bring that everywhere I go. I right. want to bring that to every environment I'm in. I want to bring the safety of like, I'm good in my skin. Right. I'm good. I know what I have. I know right. what value I have and what I can add. And and sometimes that fluctuates. Sometimes I feel it. Sometimes I don't. Um, and there was a there was a day where I was getting really in my head about how I looked. Because mm-hmm. certain for me, I'm mm-hmm. like, oh man, certain angles, you can't get me. No, no certain right, angle, I'll be like, looking different. Like, man. Da, 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 that shit. I got a chip be like, yo, my hair, I'll be tight when my hair cut don't look the same. Bro. Man. Like, bro, <laughs> like, I'll, I'll be like, yo, like, nah, I'm not the same person I was last week. Like, my shit, like, and it'd be the smallest difference. I'd be like, nah, I can see it though. I can see right. it though. I'm not, I'm not with it. I don't like it. You know what I mean? <laughs> some, some days your face is more swollen than other. You had yeah, a little right. bit of salt the other day. Like, you know what I mean? All those kind of things. And like, I was, in the show, like we're really good-looking people on the show, so right. we want to keep it up, right? Yes. right? So uh, I found myself getting in my head at one point, and I, I think we were doing a self tape. I'm getting fat, and you know, I get the fat. <laughs> yeah, okay, um, the gym once, I'll be fine. Gonna, <laughs> gets me so tight. We were doing a self tape, and and I had you know been like spiraling about like just not spiraling, but you know, it was getting really like vanity based, right. and you know, so much of what we do as artists. It's so based on vanity. Right. Mm-hmm. It's so how we look mm-hmm. and how we our angles and all that kind of stuff. And some of our favorite artists don't give a fuck about that shit, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And I feel like I was talking to somebody, having a conversation. I was talking about like when I was a kid, I had a gap in my teeth, mm-hmm. right? I was in, I was grade one, so I had my two full big front teeth, yeah, and I had a gap. And I was on the monkey bars, and somehow, some way, I slipped, hit my tooth on the monkey bars, mm-hmm. and fell, and it. Turned my my tooth and so it like closed the gap and chipped it. <laughs> so I don't have a gap, but now I have like a slanted thing, right? And I t- my, mom, my mom was always like, it adds character to your face. And right. I was like, oh, I don't know. I think I want to fix it. Mm-hmm. Maybe get braces, da da da, all kind of stuff. And I kept it. I listened to my mom and I kept it, right? And sometimes even my manager will bring it up like, you mean braces? And I looked at Invisalign, all those kind of things. Right. And I was like, maybe I want to just have that perfectly straight smile. Right. And like, I, I have a crooked smile and it kind of works sometimes. And I was talking about it to somebody, and something just kicked me in the head side. Mm. And it was like, your face is your face. Right. Loud. Mm-hmm. Like, loud. Mm-hmm. Your face it was like, face Jesus again. was like, tired of me. He was like, <laughs> your face is your face. <laughs> like, stop your shit. Like, <laughs> so tired of this kid. Like, you mm. know, because 
we don't paint. We're not, we're not painters. We don't have a canvas that we then put some, this filter, you know what I mean? It goes mm. through something else and brush strokes and all that kind of stuff. Mm. A singer, you can kind of hide behind auto-tune sometimes. Mm. You can hide behind certain things, mm. you know what I mean? A lot of these rappers don't sound like they do mm. in real life, mm. right? You can be a music artist and put a mask on all day, every day, right. and go about your business. Mm -hmm. But actors, right. this is us. This is your vessel. This is your vessel. Yeah, this is your right? instrument. This is all we got. Right. And yes, we want we, we admire Denzel, Omar Hardwick, Viola Davis, Meryl Streep, right. but they're already them. Right. Mm -hmm. right? Tom yeah. Holland, who I'm better looking than. <laughs> Tom Holland. <Yeah. laughs> you I'm know? calling you out, Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and who are all magnifying, talented people. Right. But they're doing what they do already. Right? And we can't embody that. Right. We can't embody what they do, but we can embody ourselves. And what we have comes through our vessel, right. comes through right. our face, comes right. through our expression, comes through our voice. They don't want another Mark Wahlberg. They have Mark Wahlberg. They mm -hmm. have Mark Wahlberg already, right? Yeah, you got he a younger one, young a little different nice. here that looks more like Marvin Brando right here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you're know? right. I, I've had that conversation a lot. I do love that you brought that up. Just Damn, this is a fucking bro. gem of an episode. For, if and you're I, an actor, I learned if you don't a listen lot of to this, this is crazy. Yeah, you got to listen to this one. Got to. And I learned a lot of that, like just not giving a fucking just being comfortable with you, especially after our episode with Enrique. That motherfucker, bro, he gave me so much confidence after that day, bro. I'm like, man, I could walk around the street and do what the fuck I want. Like, I don't mm -hmm. care, bro. And I seen this video on TikTok the other day, and this, and this dude was like, and he was in the airport. He's like, bro, you'll become so much more comfortable with yourself when you realize how many people aren't paying attention to you. Right. Like, <laughs> like, he was walking through the airport, Fast. and he's like, look at these motherfuckers. He's like, one person right here, phone. Next person here, phone. Next person right here, they got like their food. Like, everyone is d distracted. Like, nobody really gives a fuck about you. Like, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. But, I mean, obviously, it's, it's a little different for us because we're on TV. We People see us every fucking week, every Sunday, like, on their screen. So it's like, they see us in person. It's different, but, like, bro... People don't really be paying attention. Right. <laughs> Everyone's their own main character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. I was it's literally true. watching that video. I'm like, damn, people really don't pay attention. Like, he was walking up to people, and, like, he would literally put them in, in his camera, and, like, they would not even notice. And it's like, wow. bro, look at how unaware these people are. Hey. You'll be so much more comfortable with yourself if you realize how unaware these people are. Right. You like bro, I seen a man rob an ATM machine in broad daylight right beside me. What? While we were, me and a bunch of other people that I wasn't related to, but we were just, just eating at this table, he was... Had uh, two. I'm not stitching on him because I don't know him. Oh, they started him. I need but PC. On, he on long time. did it. Like yeah. it's done. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he was in the act of like, because you you know when someone needs to get into an ATM machine, they have the tools for it, right? right? If they're like, oh, we gotta fix it and it's right. not working. Da, da. He was like a local dude off the street with his phone in his hand, trying to like, how do I fucking do this? And, da, da, da. and he was like, Jimmy, people, nobody batted an eye. Mm. Right. Nobody yeah. gave a shit. <laughs> the cops are going to get called in this episode. We talk about traffic. <laughs> <laughs> but it just, it, it's amazed me because, like, I'm like, and also, like, what are you going to do? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you just do hey, you shouldn't ATM. do that. Hey, like, man, stop. Oh, hey, like, like, oh. get, the cops are going through this Knocked episode like, Betty Mae casting, nope, 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 <laughs> nope. And they're like, okay, robbery, here we go. <laughs> Yo, man, it, you know, but it's, it's like, it's, it's true. Like, not a lot of people are really, like, trying to mind what you're doing and right. it's, it's very it's very real it's very true right. not a lot of people are that present which is sucks yeah, sometimes but aren't present at all. we can get we can get more I've seen this dude bro I made me feel like he was an angel mm -hmm. he sent to do one thing and bounce mm -hmm. cause this guy was walking down the street and me and Keanu were walking down the street in Greenwich Village we're walking and we're like in our own world doing our own thing seeing stuff and you know just being right and this guy I kid you not Straight face, back, shoulders like this, and was like, <laughs> and he looked like there was nothing going on in here, bro. Right, right. right. Like he wasn't thinking about <laughs> shit. Yo, right. he was just blank. He was just like, like, an, like almost like a robot, just like right. walking on the street. That was me last night. NPC, bro. He was. That was me last night when I walked by both of my ex girlfriends in a two block radius. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, like, what are the odds of this? Yeah, bro. He yo, he saw both of his. Ex I was walking down. I was like, this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 nah. That's that's, that's why I'm glad I don't live in Toronto anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. That is, <laughs> that's scary shit. Right? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I love you, Lavelle. Thank you for love coming you, bro. on, bro. Nah, we appreciate yeah. it. We're gonna have you back on, obviously, but we want to get the interview out of the way so then it's we can. Indeed, it's indeed. Recap. Yeah, yes. I but we didn't even interview. We just talked acting, which I love. Talk yeah, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I, I love this episode. Yeah, it's this a great episode. Fire. A lot I of people gonna learn man. a lot. Yeah. Feel me? It's just giving me like, like the same vibe that Patina gave us. Like she right. was like, we. I feel like I learned a lot. Like in, on, off that episode yeah. too, just chopping it up with her. So yeah. You got anything you want to plug? 
uh, brother uh, at TIFF, uh, uh, this, this year's TIFF, September 9th. Kion, is it 9th? Is it 9th, brother? Yes. Yeah, September 9th, premieres are at TIFF, so get your TIFF tickets and show up in Toronto and come uh, see what up. Say uh, what up to us, and we're uh, going to be there. Follow yeah, me on yeah. Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, Lavelle Adams Gray. Kion has 19 movies coming out, so watch them all. <laughs> yeah, watch her, uh, every single last one of her movies. Kion and I are the same shit. damn movie, bro. Let's do it. That's like, so all day. tough. Yo, That's so tough. So lit. That's so lit. Tough. To God be the glory. You and wifey in the same movie. That's so fire, bro. Like, what? But listen, man. I need love. <laughs> I need love, too. I'm oh, you got enough. Like, don't even play me. <laughs> he came in today. He's like, last night. I'm like, Mike, I don't even want to hear it. Got a lot of love last night. But listen, man. <laughs> the cool has it. Um... Follow your boy, Michael Vinny Jr. or Where's 22 on Instagram. If you can follow Where's 22 if you want to get a little more, like, deeper, you know what I'm saying? I be, I be wilding on that Instagram. I'm not going to lie. So follow that. If you want to get a little more personal with me, I be chilling on that. Um, TikTok, Where's 22. Bro, you um, blowing up on TikTok. TikTok is lit right now. I ain't going to lie. TikTok is going crazy right now. Yeah. But, yeah, TikTok, all of that. Um, if you're in Jamaica, 7 Trafalgar Road, my lounge is open. Restaurant slash lounge, go do your thing. Go have fun. Yeah, we outside. Yeah. Gang, the crew has... we out there. Oh, yeah, Dream Weekend, we yeah. out. And Tycoon Weekend. Oh, yeah, we Houston. out. Oh, my Houston. God, is yeah. That? Tycoon is uh, August. Yeah. Like, like, end of August, middle August. Yeah, I'm out of here. 50, Dream 50, weekend though, bro. 50, 50 was saying he's coming on the podcast, and he, um, but he's like, oh, like towards the end of the year when Ghost comes out. And mm. I'm like, um, all right, well, we're going to have to work something out with Dream Weekend. If we're coming to Dream Weekend, we got to get to the pod. We'll figure yeah, it out. Yeah, we got to figure, we gotta figure it out. Weekend? Dream Weekend is in Jamaica. It's in the grill. In the grill. Bro, when I tell you, it's the... Like like the craziest four days I've ever had in my life. I went I went two years ago. Uh, maybe, yeah, two years ago. I mean, it might have been three, actually. I mean, yeah, three years ago. And, bro, when I tell you... <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. This is not for the pod. Yeah, yeah. This is not for Mark. the pod. This is really yeah. But yeah, Mark. follow me at Gianni V. Paolo. Uh, follow the crew has it on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, 115K thousand followers uh, as of right now. That's but just this, fucking insane. It's about to pass Raising Canaan. And I'm not throwing any shade. I'm just <laughs> stating facts. So do Damn. what you want with that information, Damn. Makai. Um, uh, I love you guys. Oh, Thank you so much for fire. watching. Hey, listen, man, the crew has it. The man, my voice it. is shot from this weekend, so I couldn't really OD. But yeah, listen, outside, my thing. The crew I mean, has it, and you have it. Thank you so much. Shout out guys. to fucking Lavelle, man. Yes, sir. Man. Thank you, Lavelle. We appreciate it, bro. That episode was fire. Thanks, man. Dumb fire. I love you, bro. Thank you for coming. Dumb fire. Hold on. Oh, shit.